So let's get into character. Let's play a little game. That title is absolutely crazy, dear, and that can't run. Let's say for the sake of argument, you're a young winger who's excited about traveling to their first World Cup to represent their country. But you get told at the start of the competition that your opportunities may be limited and you're not gonna get maybe as much game time as you were expecting. What happens next? A, you have a meeting with your manager to try and convince them to play you more. B, you train harder and hope that it pays off and is seen. C, you go home, or D, your parents blackmail your manager, leaking confidential information from 30 years ago to try and get him sacked. Don't worry, you can take your time. Phone a friend. Stop calling me, fam. This is not a real game show. Well, if you answer D, then congratulations, you're most likely Gio Reyna's parents, who decided that after their son wasn't going to get the game time they were hoping for, they would go to the US men's national team sporting director with sensitive information about US manager Greg Berhalter, to get him replaced as the national team's coach. This is the absolutely ridiculous story of Gio Reyna at the World Cup in 2022. The 2022 World Cup, the tournament so wild that we're still talking about it and it's not even 2022. Now, the US men's national team had an all right competition over in Qatar. I think they went as far as they probably would have expected. Getting out of their group that featured the likes of England, Wales and Iran and then facing off against Netherlands in the first knockout stages and being beaten 3-1. But having not really scored that many goals, I think they scored three goals in four games at the tournament. One man who maybe would have helped with their creativity and goal scoring at the tournament is Gio Reyna, Borussia Dortmund. The 20 year old is widely regarded as the next big thing in American football. No, not American, that's NFL. In American. Soccer. He's a wonder kid, if we're being honest, but has been ravaged by injury, especially over the last two years. Let's see him fall down the pecking order slightly at Borussia Dortmund. But with exceptional talent like Christian Pulisic, Brendan Aronson, Timothy Weyer, and Josh Sargent. Okay, I said exceptional. It's maybe not guaranteed that he's going to start, especially given in the 2021-22 season. He only played 10 times for Borussia Dortmund in the league. Well, introducing the US manager, Greg Berhalter, who's a little bit of a polarizing figure in terms of American fans. He's the US men's national team coach, and again, there's a bit of a divide, I think, amongst American fans about whether he's the right man to take the team forward. He told Gio Reyna that he maybe wasn't going to get as much game time as he was probably expecting, given the wonder kid status that he has. Here's Gio to his boss after being told he's going to be the water boy for the tournament. Now, Gio did not take this very well. In his own words, he admitted that he wasn't applying himself very well off the back of that, wasn't training as hard as he should have been, and US coaches were even considering sending him home because because they weren't happy with his attitude. Now before the game against the Netherlands and he came out and apologized, he held his hands up and said, you know, I'm young, I'm only 20, I shouldn't have reacted like that. And as a result, he got a little bit more game time against the Netherlands. And you know, that's fair, he apologized, he understood that he didn't react the way he should have done. Now the problem is, after he apologized, Greg Barhalter gave an off the record talk at a leadership conference, talking about a player whose attitude he hadn't been too pleased with. Now I don't think he actually name checked Gio Reyna, but it was very apparent who he was talking about and this off the record speech kind of worked its way into the media and it felt like Gio was getting dragged through the dirt again even though he'd already apologized. Now if you're a Sunderland fan and you're 31 years of age you may recognize the name Reyna and that's because his dad Claudio played in the Premier League for Sunderland and then became a legend at Manchester City. Anyone who played for Man City before the money is a legend. I mean how do you even put up with that to be No, so, Claudio Reyna was actually ironically very injury prone as well at Man City but he played at World Cups for the US himself back in 2002 and 2006. Now he played with Greg Berhalter at those World Cups that I just mentioned, uh, so he knows him very well. But Claudio and his wife Danielle were not too happy with his antics at Qatar because they went to the US men's national team sporting director with information about Greg from 31 years ago where after an argument with his then girlfriend and now wife, he kicked her in the shins in public. Basically the two wives in this situation I believe were college football players together so knew each other when they were young and when it happened. Now don't get it twisted, this is outrageous behavior. That's at least a straight red card. Now after this incident originally back in the 90s, the two of them actually broke up. So this is Greg and Rosalind is now wife. They decided to break up, but eventually rekindled things after several months. He spent time trying to change as a person, even got counseling after the incident, and now they've been married for 25 years. So the timing of this was literally the day after these comments about Gio reached the news. So Gio's mum and dad have seen 
seen this, realized that he's not got the game time he should have done at the World Cup. And despite saying they didn't want to blackmail him, they've gone to Greg's boss, to all intents and purposes, and said, yeah, nah, just to let you know, yeah, this guy kicked a girl back in the day. This is like parents complaining at like an under nines game to their child's coach, but on steroids. What the f Coach, bring on my son already. Sir, you are 57 and your son is 24. What are you doing? I'll be honest, things are going to be a little bit tense at the next US Men's National Team barbecue. But it is worth knowing, by the way, that from what we can gather and what we can tell, Gio himself didn't exactly ask his parents to do this. If anything, he was trying to defuse the situation when Claudio stormed into the dressing room asking for answers. You didn't win sh in my yard. Wait, wait, I wait. Arby. Daddy, chill. What the hell is even that? I just, I, I'm not entirely sure I'm getting this situation overall. How is this the first thing you draw for? Like, how do you, like, my, oh yeah, my son isn't quite getting enough game time. What should I do now? Blackmail. It's literally illegal. Like, Claudio, you're gonna get arrested. But he'll still have abuse to throw at Greg Balder from the sidelines. I didn't call you Baldy Baldy. And don't get it twisted, all right? I don't know how old Greg would have been when this incident happened. I think 18. It's not acceptable. You know, you can't act like that in whatever relationship that you're in. Abusive relationships are some of the most damaging things to women or any partner that you can go through. And he has to take responsibility for his actions, though seemingly he did at the time go in and getting counselling, trying to change as a person. And in a statement that he physically joined Twitter to make, he said that they've been married for 25 years and nothing similar has happened since. Something that's been reiterated as well by his wife. Now, as I said, it's not acceptable behaviour, even if it did happen quite a long time ago. The fact that Gio Reyna's mum and dad have brought this to light now and brought it to the table is so unfair, first of all, on Rosalind, who was a victim at the time. And it's now been brought into the public space without her permission What? Whatsoever. But they even had the audacity to tell the US Men's National Team Sporting Director, Ernie Stewart, that they didn't want this to become public information. They were just telling him just, I don't know, as information he needed to know. What were they expecting to happen? They've clearly told Ernie this information with the knowledge that it will hopefully get Greg sacked. It is a revenge tactic. It is quite clearly just an element of blackmail. It's hollow. I don't like it. The Rainers haven't made themselves look good at all here. Geo has done nothing wrong and he probably is now made to feel kind of embarrassed about his parents' action too. They're just too involved. What, do they hold a vendetta when he gets tackled too hard in training? My son, he's got a graze on his knee. How can you just let other kids tackle him like that? Claudio, it was a tackling training session. What the Imagine if every family of a footballer who didn't get enough game time took this route. It's happened once with Rainer. Donny van der Beek would have got through his entire family by now with the amount of time he's been sat on the bench. Eric Ten Hag would have been blackmailed by Donny's sister, parents, grandfather, great uncle, pet gerbil and Uber driver from three weeks ago by now. Timothy Weyer's dad literally runs an entire country and hasn't got this annoyed yet. He could quite literally start a political incident over football in game time if he wanted to. I've got to say I wonder how this is going to affect the rest of the US men's national team camp as well. Christian Pulisic's reaction to the story was telling. Mother trucker, dude. Meanwhile, Romelu Lukaku sat somewhere fuming that he's Belgian and hasn't got his American passport yet and therefore can't replace Reyna in the team. What the fuck, yo? Overall, this is like probably the best example of how not to react if your son or if you are not getting game time that you want. But at the end of the day, equally, he did apologize for it and he's a young kid who probably was expecting to be one of the focal points of this American side. In the future, I'm sure he will be. If he can steer clear of injuries that have plagued him over the last two seasons, he will develop and he will flourish into a brilliant footballer. And I really hope that what his parents have done over the last few weeks won't hinder him to any degree in the future, but these parents are acting like children instead of grown adults, I cannot lie. What now for Greg Bohalta? Well, technically he's out of a job because his contract expired at the end of 2022 and we're now into the second week of 2023. There is talk of him re-signing as the men's national team manager for like another term or cycle if you will, but after his controversial hiring in the first place where he basically got the job because his brother gave it to him within the federation and with this current investigation going on, it is kind of 
hard to know whether he will continue as manager and also what his relationship will now be with his players as well. But let me know what you think down in the comment section below. What should happen here? Should Baal to keep his job? And ultimately, he's made a big mistake in the past, but has seemed to better himself since then. On top of that, though, there are going to be some fundamental problems in relationships between himself and certainly Giovanni Reina, who seems to be one of America's most promising talents. If you enjoyed this video, though, feel free to slap a like on it and, of course, subscribe if you are new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media. It is at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves and goodbye. <laughs>